Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. It's Wednesday, and yes, we're back to midweek mini mail calls. This is gonna be number 26, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that because uh, <laughs> I'm losing track. There's been a lot of them. It's written on my notepad, wherever that is. I don't have it handy with me, but I think it's number 26. On today's video, there's gonna be a bunch of Commodore stuff, well, specifically Commodore VIC-20. Some very neat stuff, kind of homebrewish. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. So the next package here is from Stuart. This is the same gentleman who sent me the Apple II Plus computer that I have made a bunch of videos on already. So um, let's just take a look at what's in this very thick flat rate box. Hmm, something in a bag here. So Stuart had reached out to me and mentioned he had run into some things for the VIC-20. So we have a couple cartridges here. We have Radar Rat Race and Sargon 2 Chess. I think as most of my viewers know, I had a VIC-20 as my first computer when I was a kid, and I had mostly cassette-based games, but I did have a couple cartridge-based games, and I remember for sure one of them was Radar Rat Race. In addition, though, he sent me something that's pretty cool, and I can't wait to check this out. So here it is. What this is, is an 80 column video card for the VIC-20. From my understanding, this plugs in the cartridge slot and then gives you full 80 column video output on your VIC-20 through this connector here. There were of course 80 column cards for the 64 as well and they were covered by 8-Bit Guy for instance. And none of them worked really that well because programs needed to be written to take advantage of them and pretty much none were. Uh, so I didn't even know that there were such a thing for the VIC-20, but apparently there were because there's actually a manual here for it. And then in addition, he sent this, which is a homebrew, handmade, wire-wrapped RAM expansion card for the VIC-20. No idea if this works, but it's loaded up with SRAM, and it actually came with a second uh, prototype PCB for the VIC-20, so you could spin your own cartridges for it. So whoever made this clearly was a big fan of the VIC-20 and put a lot of effort into it. And in this, I think, is documentation for this stuff here. Like, there's a folder here. Ah, yes, a real computer for the price of a toy. A VIC-20 sales pamphlet. And then we have some more schematics. I think these are the schematics for the homebrew card. Very cool. We'll take a look at these in a second. And it looks like just some more photocopied stuff of data sheets, functional diagrams, stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. There's an invoice for the original RAM chips here. There's a credit card slip for them. Looks like documentation from the seller of who sold these in the first place. Uh, the date is 1983 for this stuff that was sold here. So we'll have to take a closer look at this. But yeah, this is some pretty neat stuff here. So very cool. Let's take a look at this stuff on the bench. All right, I have the VIC-20 on the bench and it doesn't look like it, it looks like a 64, but it's my junky VIC-20 board. Yeah, let's turn that on. Anyhow, before we get started, I wanna take a look at this RAM cartridge for the VIC-20. This was sent in by Mike, and I think it was on the last mail call where I got the really yellow VIC-20. Looks like this is made by a company called Card RAM and 16K memory expansion, which is quite a beefy one. This would have cost quite a lot of money back in the day. Now there's some dip, dip switches here to enable and disable the ROM banks and a couple of them on the right are kind of hot snotted on. They're set to the on positions. I guess you can't adjust those. And on the back, not much to report. It's just a regular VIC-20 cartridge. So let's try this out in the actual VIC-20. I just slotted that into the cartridge here and let's see if we have additional free RAM. And we do not. We have the same amount of RAM that we have on a stock machine. I'm just gonna flip all of these dip switches to the on position. Everything is on the up position now. Let's see if that makes any difference. And we have additional RAM now. And we do not, we still have the same exact amount. So there's a single screw on the back here. Why don't we take a look inside this RAM cartridge? Uh, the screw's a little rusty, so that might be bad or not. I'm not sure. I'm 
not positive on how to open this thing. And I'm sure people are screaming at their screen. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, there is the cartridge. And this thing is just a whole lot of static RAM chips. Each one of these chips is 2K, and we just have a little 74LS Logic chip here to select the amount of memory we're going to have with this little dip switch thing going on here. It is weird that I thought that those were glued to the on position, but that does not appear to be the case because now they're all selectable. So unless the little glue fell off, not sure what's going on with that exactly. So I'm just gonna try everything in the off position in case this, this switch is in upside down or something like that. All right, let's see what we get. And we get a black screen, which is what this machine does occasionally. We'll try the power cycle again. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, no RAM. Hey, look at that, we got extra RAM. So this is how I had the switch configured for that extra RAM right now. And according to the little legend on here, uh, switch eight on the board, there's the equivalent of switch one here, and on is up. And luckily, a quick search of the internet archive found the manual for this thing. All right, so to start off, it says, turn on RAM one block one and RAM two block two. And it says when we turn on the computer, that should give us 19,967 bytes free. RAM one block one, RAM two block two. And we turn on the computer and we're getting a black screen, which is this VIC-20 being itself, its stupid self. Come on, there we go. Hey, look at that, 19,967. That is the full complement of RAM. Reading a little further in the manual, it seems like you should only ever have one of each ROM block enabled, and it allows you to move them around into different positions depending on what other expansion cards you have in your VIC-20, because it wasn't uncommon that people had a thing that stuck on the back of the machine and let you plug in a bunch of cards or expansion slots at the same time, and you often wanted to move the RAM around into a free block so it wasn't overlapping with, say, a cartridge ROM or something that you had in here. So yeah, that's, um, that's what the configuration allows you to do, is move the RAM around. So Mike, if you're watching this, thanks very much again for donating this cartridge with that other VIC-20. This is actually pretty sweet. I don't have any other RAM expansions and now I have a nice 16K one. Okay, so now onto the stuff that Stuart sent and there's some interesting goodies here. So first, close up look at this homemade RAM expansion card for the VIC-20. Notice, <laughs> Just like that other one, this has these 2K SRAM chips on it. But unlike that other one, this actually has what looks like 24K of RAM on here. And then there it is, hand wire wrapped on the back side. Wow. Whoever created this card used one of these prototype boards, which is designed for wire wrapping. Notice there is absolutely no copper on here, except for this part here, which is what plugs into the back of the computer. It just has these holes on it. Then you install the sockets, which have rather long pins on them. They stick through the board. And then you have a special little tool, which looks like a little screwdriver, but it has a round tip. And you take a little bit of the wire, stick it in there, and you put it on and twist it on. And it sort of wraps it very tightly around those pins. And you go through and you wire up the entire board as you're supposed to. And this is a very reliable way of making circuit boards. So in this folder, there's some blueprints here that are not the ones for the computer. Those are in here as well. But there is this one here, which might be hard to get in a shop, but it says high speed 32K memory board. Is this for the VIC-20? I don't think so. You can't add 32K of RAM to the VIC-20, but it has a date here of 526, 1982. Okay, this is a much larger blueprint. I'm not gonna be able to really show this on camera. But I think this is the actual layout for the memory board. It says down here, MPU and memory board A. MPU. That's interesting. No, I'm not totally sure about this. This has something called a CDP1802E, a 40 pin dip. So that is not that board. There is no 40 pin dip on there. Maybe this was something that went with the, for the VIC-20 that was a multi-processor board. It was a second processor with extra RAM, something like that. Let's keep looking through here a real computer for the price of a toy. Just, just love that. Look at all those games. <laughs> Tape software and cartridge software. 
Bally Midway series, adventure and strategy education series, home babysitter. Well, you know what? I actually have that cartridge right here. Home babysitter. It's got to be like the worst <laughs> cartridge. I, it's obviously for very young children, but um, it's pretty poor. The Commodore VIC-20. A whole brochure about why this thing is so great because you can grow it. Like you can buy this Commodore disk drive that costs way more than the computer itself and everything else you own for it. <laughs> All right, he's got some data sheets here. Here's a photocopy of some kind of card. This looks like a RAM expansion potentially as well, but only a 4K RAM expansion. And it looks like the backside of that PCB. Got some more data sheets here and some hand-drawn sketches here. And here is an article from the March 1983 edition of Byte, Enhanced VIC-20, adding a 3K memory board. It probably tells you how to make one yourself. And funny, this article is written by Joel Swank in Beaverton, Oregon. Beaverton is just miles, a few miles away from my house, just over the hill from downtown Portland. Yeah, so it's got the pinout for the expansion connector, it has the memory map here. It's talking about buying a prototype board to plug into the slot. Oh, and there it is, look at that. So it's telling you uh, how to build it there, the photograph. This memory board is using two 114s, which are pretty common SRAMs. They're, they're much smaller little dip packages and they are 512 bytes each. So we have uh, six of those for 3K total. And it's a very simple construction. Now look, there's, there's really just that SRAM on it with nothing else. You don't even need any other support logic because SRAM doesn't need any refresh or whatever. And it will give your VIC-20 that extra 3K. So this guy must have been designing his own memory board, which is amazing. This looks like some PowerPlay magazine, Commodore magazine, the Commodore VIC-20 price list. So the VIC-20 itself, $299.95. The data set, $75. The 1540 disk drive, $399. That's a ton of money. I wonder what year this was from. Doesn't really say. The graphic printer was $395, modem $109, a joystick was $9, and two two-player paddles, $15. But check it out, here's the RAM expansion. 16K RAM expansion, $110, and the 3K was $40. So this guy was trying to build something remarkable with this 24K one here. Saved himself quite a bit of money. Here are the invoice for the 12 SRAM chips he bought, only $57. Unfortunately, there is no date on this invoice, but $57, big savings over the 109 for just 16K. And I wonder if he ever got this working. We'll test this out in just a second. Back to the price list. It looks like most of the cartridges were $30 each. Some were a little more. Adventureland Adventure was $40. In fact, all these Scott Adams games were $40. Home Babysitter, $30. I'll put on the screen what $30 in like 1982 cost. That's probably when this list is from, but that was a lot of money. This is a great cartridge, the VIC-20 Super Expander. So this gave you extra RAM, also gave you a graphic commands in basic. It made it a lot easier to do a lot of things. It was expensive at 70 bucks, but at least it did a lot for you. And then there was the Programmer's Aid, which also gave you quite a bit of extra capabilities within basic, $10 less. And just like the Commodore 64, there was the VIC-20 programmer reference guide, which talked about all you need to do to program this thing with assembly language or whatnot. And that was $17. And wow, look, the RF modulator, $20. That's really expensive. And same for a power supply, 20 bucks. Power supply on the VIC-20, like on this one, it's just an AC power supply. It's, it's nothing more than just a brick. And then there's another price list, and yet not a single price on the whole thing, that's ridiculous. Ah, here's the original invoice. I'm not gonna show the top page because it has some personal information on it, but there are the chips again, the static RAM chips, $52.56, 3% credit card fee, shipping material, 73 cents, and shipping was $2.77. Back when mail in the US cost 20 cents. And I see the date here, 1983. And lastly, what we have in here these are the VIC-20 schematic main logic version E, literally a blueprint. It's made on a mimeograph. I think the machine was called to make these. That's why the color is blue. And fortunately it's really, really faded. It's pretty cool looking though, but uh, not a lot to see on here. Here is the SRAM. So this revision 
it's probably somewhat similar to this one because it has all the individual SRAM chips here. The later version had a more consolidated design without so much stuff, but it's pretty amazing to see. This is the entire schematic for the VIC-20. It's a very, very simple machine. I'd imagine you could buy these from Commodore. It says, uh, has their logo here and copyright 1980. All right, so that is some neat stuff in there. Let's move on to the cartridges. I guess the first thing to do is let's test out this homemade RAM expansion and see if this even works. I'll shuffle things around a little bit so this fits in. Okay, the expansion board is in. What's gonna happen? Black screen, <laughs> that is typical again of this VIC-20. Let's do a few power cycles. Whoa, it totally is working. <laughs> Look at that. This homebrew guy knew what he was doing. 28,159 bytes and he made it for just $57 with a few extra parts for the extra sockets and things like that and the TTL logic. That is cool. I just love the fact that these guys were tinkering and doing cool stuff like this back in the day. I mean, imagine building a RAM expansion for your smartphone today, right? It's, it's not feasible. It's, it's just, there's no way you can do something like that. And yet someone was able to build their own 24K RAM expansion for the VIC-20. I just, that is amazing to me. Well, my mind is officially blown that this RAM expansion works. That's just staggering, awesome. I can't even fathom how cool this is. I would have been so excited back in the day to build something like this and then have it actually work. And moving on, Stuart did send me two cartridges. Uh, Radar Rat Race, this was one that I had as a kid and I played the hell out of this. I had this on my VIC-20. I didn't really have a lot of cartridge games. I had a lot of tape games, if I recall, but this was one of the ones I had. Sargon Chess, I don't think I had this uh, back in the day, but let's test out Radar Rat Race. This has really annoying music. They did make a 64 version of this, which is basically unimproved. It's the same crappy game. It really is not a very good game. I'm gonna plug in the D-pad here for a little Radar Rat Race action. And let's see, black screen or working? Oh, didn't even come up. All right. I just reseated the game in the cartridge slot. And we're getting a black screen now. Ah, oh, come on, really? I gotta say, it's ridiculously hard to get cartridges out of this computer sometimes. There we go. Let's check out the contacts. Everything seems fine. They're not dirty. Let's try sticking that in one more time. Incidentally, for power, I am not using the regular VIC-20 power supply. I'm just using my bench power supply and I am feeding it 12 volts DC. And that absolutely works. That is enough. That is plenty of power. Oops. Hey, at least we got something different. Let's power cycle this again. Okay, so I think this cartridge is not working, obviously. It should auto start. I don't need to do any kind of special command to make this work. And we obviously saw the RAM expansions were working. So we know that the cartridge slot on this computer is fine. There is no issue. In fact, I have played other games in here before and they work as well. Let's just take a look inside of here. Maybe there's some obvious problem. And there it is. That's a, that's a game cartridge on the VIC-20. There is not much going on there. We just have a mask ROM here, which you could easily replace with an EEPROM, by the way. I think it's relatively standard pinout, although maybe not. Maybe this is actually pinout of like a 2532, something like that. And a couple jumpers there. But yeah, nothing is obviously wrong. Uh, everything looks fine here. This, this ROM just may not be good anymore. Give it one more chance with a little deoxid. <laughs> I'll just rub these contacts, get the get a little bit of that oxidation off. They really weren't dirty, so I am not anticipating any improvement here whatsoever. All right, there we go. Let's just give this one more test. Now I'm gonna have to get this out of the computer again afterwards. That's annoying. Actually plugged in a lot easier with that deoxid on there. All right, power. All right, black screen, come on. Let's get this going. Hey, that deoxid, that did the trick. Oh, I can't even believe it, it worked. Let's plug the joystick back in and try that. I was ready to give up on that, that cartridge. F1 to start. 
F1 to run. Oh boy, here's that horrible music. Prepare for annoying. And I died. So it plays that music over and over again. I forgot you can like fart out some dust or something. Isn't this a, this game is a copy of another game. A really bad, you cannot turn off the music. I can obviously turn the volume down, which I'm gonna do to save everyone's sanity because it's such a terrible tune that just, and these pink colors, the, I remember this from a kid. So I'm trying to get to the cheese and I'm getting chased by these rats and then there are some cats sitting around, but the cats don't do anything. So there's nothing to, whoa. Oh, see, I, I farted out the dust here. I was too close or he was too close to me. Vic Rat Race. Dodge cats and red rats to eat 10 cheese before time runs out. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So removing this from the machine with the oxid on there was super easy. So before I plug in this uh, Sargon one, I'm gonna do the Deoxid trick on this. I'm not gonna open the cartridge. So I'll just use this cotton swab here to rub these contacts. Uh, it gets off a little bit of crud there, just a little bit. And I'll put this on this side here. Rub this on. So deoxid, the trick for getting the cartridges in and out of the VIC-20 without the maximum struggle that you normally have. All right, Sargon 2 chess. Look at that, popped right in, so easy. I know it worked, Sargon 2. Wow, 1979. I didn't think the VIC-20 was even out in that by then. Was this a pet game originally or something? Game or setup, game, your color. I don't know, I'll be white, goes first. Level, definitely zero, because I'm horrible at chess. Okay, so what do you do here? I guess I'm supposed to like type what I'm doing here. So like D2 to, uh, uh, what was that, uh, D4? Oh, that worked. Okay, so you just have to type in what you're doing. And then there, there is a little bit of sound. It made a little beep. I had the volume turned down, right? So uh, I'll see, F3, oops, that's not right, F2. This is really tedious, I apologize, F4. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> if you've watched Queen's Gambit on Netflix, that's some actual chess playing. Well, you know, it's a fictional story, but um, I, I, I know the moves and that's it. My strategy, there is zero strategy that I have. And the last thing to look at is this. Protecto 80, Protecto, Protecto, what is that? Anyway, it's weird. It's a 80, 4080 column board with free software. There's a couple sys commands for 40 and 80 columns mode. Return to the VIC 22 column mode is that, and you can restart the mode. It does not clear the screen. All right, so this is cool. I can't wait to see this. Oh, it gives you the registers for the CRTC that's in this thing. So it allows you to customize the output, you know, change the font size and whatnot, probably. Some commands. Ah, it says here that this 80 column board has an option of 8K of extra RAM as well. If it shows 11,175 bytes, you have the RAM on it. Well, let's give it a try. It's in this bag here. Let's see if this has SRAM. Oh, it does not. It's obviously not installed. It would be those same 2K SRAMs, but uh, it's probably pretty trivial for me just to clear out these holes and I will be able to put some sockets in there and I could install SRAM. I have SRAM chips. I could take them off the homemade board as well, or I can use some I have from stock. And there may be like a jumper I have to set here, but the manual might talk about it. But let's give this a try. So it's got a CRTC, has a video output connector. I take it, this does not do any kind of pass through. You probably had a switch box or you have to move the cable back and forth. I'm just gonna quickly add the deoxit onto here. Why not? We've been having good luck with it anyways, right? Plus it makes this easier to get in and out of the slot. Okay, so I have a video cable that's plugged in the retro tank so I can keep this little TV plugged into the composite output on the VIC-20 at the same time so we could see what's going on here. So uh, that's not the computer, that's just the retro tank doing its silliness. Turn this on. Okay, we got, we got a blue screen on there, which is maybe the computer screwing up. Let's just power cycle it, double check. I guess it's supposed to be booting into, hey, look at that, wait. 
it is outputting text in 40 column mode through this device. So you're actually getting 40 column basic two, which means you can probably run Commodore pet programs. Does this have all the like normal pet ski characters? It does. It absolutely does. Yeah, this is basically looking very similar, if not the same as the font on the Commodore PET. So if I type in sys4972, that just switches into 80 column mode, it's resyncing, and there it is. Interesting, Data20 Corporation version 1.1. But this still has Petski, there's all the Petski characters working as normal, but yet we're getting a full 80 columns on the VIC-20. How awesome. Anyhow, I was trying to say is because this is running in text mode, oh, it is pretty slow actually. Um, it's not graphics, it's just doing text. It should be relatively fast, but that is relatively slow actually. Now I can issue 4975 and the text is left here, but we now have a very screwed up looking, <laughs> It's funny how it said it's going to return control, and yet look at that. If I try to run my program, look how screwed up this is. I'm assuming it, bat it patched the kernel or it patched the basic ROM to allow 80 column support, and now it's freaking out in the 22 column mode. I'm just going to power cycle everything here and give it one more try, see if that, if it, see if it works a little bit better. If I try again, 4975. All right, there we go. Now we are just in the normal VIC-20 mode as, as it should be. So it still has text here, it still has text here. You could actually show text on both if you learn how to program this thing with assembly language. If we do sys40978, then it leaves the text here and now we're back on this screen and it didn't clear that text either. So yeah, this is pretty sweet, I gotta say. Incidentally, here are some of the specs of this board it sports reverse video. It seems to map the 2K video memory directly into the memory map of the VIC-20, so you can actually write directly to it, which is pretty sweet. You can do that with basic probably pretty easily. Just poke the memory into those locations. Optional 8K. It looks like it has a 2K ROM that also maps into memory, so that takes up some of your space in the memory map, so you can't use that 24K RAM expansion with this thing, for instance, because this is taking up 2K plus 2K, so 4K total of memory in the 64K memory space. Well, I've decided to go ahead and install these uh, sockets here. Uh, so I have cleaned out the little holes here with the desoldering iron, along with this switch here. This is for the RAM bank, and I'm gonna s install these and see if I can get 8K plus the 3K or 4K or whatever that's built in this thing. Uh, that way I can try out some PET programs because I wouldn't really be able to run many basic programs from the PET on the VIC-20 if I didn't have a little bit more RAM. And uh, since I don't have one of those multi-cartridge things, uh, this will be the only way. And I really want to try that. Okay, there we go. I did borrow the RAM out of this board. So this is period correct memory, I think all from 1983. By the way, just look at the socket to use. He used the nice round machined pin, whatever these are called, sockets on here. These probably cost a pretty penny. But what was nice is since the chips were in sockets like that, uh, these can be a little hard to get chips into sometimes, but of course they came right out of here, went straight into this board, no issue at all. I did install the jumper for the selection right here. Although uh, the pin spacing on that is actually for a toggle switch, which I didn't have. So the reality is I put three pins on there, but one of the pins is a little too far away for a jumper to go on there. So I'd have to bend that if I wanted to use block three. But I think block one, which is the one that I put the two pins on, will be the most common to use. So let's pop this in the computer, see if we have the extra 8K of RAM. All right, pop this in. I wish I had a case. Be awesome to have a proper case for this uh, 80 column card. I wonder, does anyone know if this ever had one back in the day, originally? All right, and the moment of truth. Uh, oh, there we go, it took a while. 
Could be because it's counting the extra RAM. 11,775 bytes. It totally worked. How awesome is that? Okay, for loading software, let's try the trusty old SDIEC. This absolutely does work on the VIC-20, if you can believe it. I think the problem is gonna be that the program, the file browser for it, is gonna wanna run on this. So let's see, I'll try to load, uh, let's load dollar sign off it. So it did load, and if I type list, we should see all the directory, yep, okay. File browser 20 is the one we need. FB20, comma, eight. And let's hit run, see what happens. Uh, okay, so it just ended up over here. Not exactly happy. Let's try running that again. Okay, yeah. I think I'm gonna power cycle the computer. And before I load the file browser, I am gonna pop over to VIC-22 column mode. All right, there we go. Load FB20, comma, eight. Let's see if this works now. It does not. Let's just try this one more time. I'm just gonna load the main file browser with the star, which should automatically run the VIC-20 version. All right, wait, here we go. Seize it, VIC-20. Hey, okay, hold on, I don't know. That's weird, I guess I just need to run, I just need to run that. Okay, so let's see, there should be some stuff in here that I can run that are basic programs, because obviously that's the only thing that might work. All right, I found Squiggle and Big Time, which are pet programs. These are basic programs, so let's run Big Time. And hopefully this works. It's obviously gonna not run properly on here. Okay, well that didn't do anything. Let's see if we can do list. All right, so I'm gonna try to load uh, Big Time. And I'm just gonna put comma A here. Well, file not found. Oh, Big Time with a space. Load Big Time. Nog Big. Time. I think this is not gonna work. Oh, hey, no, it's working, okay. So let's run. Okay, enter the time. 11.48 or 38 or whatever. <laughs> there it is, big time, it's running. How cool. Now, one thing you'll notice is you see the cursor flow flowing around on here and that's because according to the manual, it says it does not turn off the cursor when it's running the program. And there's a poke you run to do that. Okay, so big time, we're just gonna modify this to turn the cursor off. Look at this, by the way, it's uh, originally by Scott Mockus, but modified by Bill Sealer. Bill Sealer, famous Bill Sealer. So in the manual here, it says we add poke 399.28,10. And we also add poke 399.29 comma 48, and let's try that again. Okay, notice there's no more cursor anymore, so that's what happens. And, uh, but hey, now it's not gonna be flying around the screen. Look at that, we're running a pet piece of software on the VIC-20 in 40 column mode. Now remember, this, this does not turn the VIC-20 into a pet. I can't run all pet software. Anything that writes directly to video RAM, like games, will not work on this because the memory locations for this, I don't think are in the same location as they are on the pet. Not to mention anything that uses the kernel routines, that's probably incompatible, just kernel locations on the VIC-20, they can't possibly be the same as on the pet. But at least you can run basic 40 column programs and any 80 column basic programs that exist, those probably work. And if they don't run because they're poking specific things, you can probably fix them by just adjusting a little bit of the things in the program. But this one, as you can see, it works flawlessly. All right, I've loaded up the Squiggle program as well. Uh, this is another pet program that I found on an audio cassette uh, on a data set for the pet. And if we run this, Wiggle Factor, we'll put in five, and it draws squiggly lines around using Petski. Now, of course, the cursor is not hidden, so you see that zipping around, but it's absolutely running great as well. So it's another example of a pet basic program designed for the pet working and it wouldn't normally run because of the, well, it would run, but it would look screwed up because of course the built-in screen here, the video output is 22 columns and this is designed for 40 columns, so it's not gonna work.
So thank you very much, Stuart, for sending in this pretty cool VIC-20 stuff, especially I'm really loving this 80-column card and this RAM expansion board. Both of these things are just super cool. Thanks again. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this midweek mini mail call. And if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You hit that thumbs down button. Please subscribe to my channel if you don't mind and hit that little bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos. And of course, put your comments and your suggestions in the comment section below. That's going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.